The shooting of Jason Hennessy Sr. on Christmas Eve, um, you know, has had an ongoing sort of effect where we are now looking at eight young people before the courts, the special criminal courts. And I could be wrong. I'm not sure that I have seen people this young before the special criminal court facing the kind of charges they are. There's now two 18 year olds. There's a 17 year old boy who's also been charged. Some of them varying in offences between murder and violent disorder. And of course, in recent weeks, Jason Hennessy's son, Brandon Hennessy, who's 21, uh, he has also been brought before the courts. Yeah, he's also been charged with violent disorder. Obviously, these charges all relate to the uh, the shooting um, on uh, Christmas Eve uh, in in Brown Steakhouse in Blanchardstown, when a gunman uh, went into Brown Steakhouse, attempted to kill Jason Hennessy Senior. Um, he was shot, Jason Hennessy Senior. He ultimately died in hospital a couple of weeks later. Um, but the gun jammed and then the gun was removed from him and that gunman, Tristan Sherry, was was killed at the scene. Mm-hmm. Um, so eight people have been charged and certainly while there may have been a couple of people before the Special Criminal Court in the long distant past in connection with dissident offences in the 70s or 80s, in modern times, it's there haven't been anything of, of people of that age group. Teenagers, I don't think so. I certainly uh, can recall, you know, seeing young, young men in their early 20s, but I don't honestly think I've seen an 18 year old no. before that course. But anyway, nonetheless, the most recent development, of course, is one of the teenagers who's accused of removing the submachine gun from the restaurant um, went to the Court of Appeal because he was refused bail by the High Court and the Appeals Court have given him bail. And his name is Jores Kumbu. He's from Blanchardstown. He's 18 years of age and he's charged with possession of the submachine gun. Yeah. So um, the appeals court basically looked at the CCTV footage of the incident at the restaurant. They heard submissions from the lawyers on behalf of both uh, himself and the state and decided that it was okay to grant this guy bail on a number of conditions. And he'll have to sign on three times a week at Blanchestown Garda Station. He surrenders his passport and he stays away from the co-accused in the case because it's obviously, you know, in the background there, you still have a very volatile situation. Now, the um, appeals court didn't agree that he was a sort of as great a flight risk as the state suggested he was. And also the risk of returning to the gun yeah, it says the state has, or certainly the appeals court have have ruled that sort of that gun has already been used. It's not essentially. No, I mean it was the state's case that um, it, it had been it had been shown that he'd interfere with with the the, the process of justice by the actual removal of the gun. Mm-hmm. So I mean that is the state's case. It was explicitly said that he removed the gun from the scene. Um, however, the appeals court said it wasn't uh, it wasn't a, a fully made out the case that they made that he was arrested in January but wasn't charged until later on the year, I think it was April, and he hadn't uh, been a flight risk at that stage. And obviously the risks were lessened in regard to dealing with, obviously with the evidence, which is the gun in this case. Um, So you see, I suppose, um, that that this case is going to go on and on in terms of the Special Criminal Court. Um, It's hard for... Like the bail, it's people apply for bail, uh, you know, in all sorts of cases. If it's not automatically granted, which it is quite regularly, mm. um, then they have to go to the high court and they get a chance to appeal there. Um, obviously, these things, you know, take an extra couple of months. But the longer somebody stays on remand, I suppose, largely the greater chance they have of getting bail. Um, the special criminal court is, there has become an extremely long wait for it at times and to keep a young man on bail, uh, you know, there, it's always going to be difficult for the state to make that case, I suppose, over it's time. It's such an unusual case because, right, we've eight people before the courts, which is a huge amount of people facing charges in relation to essentially what was two incidents. Yeah. But in the one crime scene and at the one location and at the one time, um, you know, before 
in the courts in recent years, we saw, I think, an eight man hit team up. Yeah. And that was kind of like the biggest case of yeah. its kind at the time. All of them were working together, uh, the state said, in order to kill Patsy Hutch in this case. Yeah. And it was a surveillance led operation. And um, they were arrested at the scene with the weapons in the car ready to conduct the hit. So it was also said that that was an extremely expensive operation. And I think probably a lot of the money in that case had gone into the prior to the surveillance in the run up to that hit. Uh, We heard from other cases that some of those hits can take months and months in the planning and that the surveillance can be on certain individuals for like a long time before they actually make a move. I'm thinking in particular of... um, of Alan Wilson, his cousin, Luke Wilson, and others that were involved in the attempted assassination of Gary Hanley. And there was months of surveillance on them because they were so chaotic. They kept planning to do the hit and then somebody would sleep in or somebody would have a hangover and it would all be cancelled. And of course, all the undercover officers were ready to go and were working and they'd have to call off. But this is unusual because while... There's some planning gone into it. It's chaotic at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's the, it's a re- reaction to an event that occurred, which is obviously the Tristan Sherry coming in to the to the restaurant and opening fire, and um, the planning, you know, doesn't kick in before he steps into the restaurant. If There's you know no I mean. guard intelligence in the run up to this. This no. has obviously been planned in some way, in that he's armed with this gun yeah. and he knows where Jason Hennessy Senior is this night. He's eating with a group of associates, and he it's planned enough for him to arrive there to go in and to try and conduct yeah. that murder and make his getaway. But obviously, the reaction of of Jason Hennessy uh, Senior's associates is not a planned event. Exactly. And there are, you know, it's not something that, it's something that occurred in reaction to something. And there's obviously a lot of the facts are established ahead of going in, not the facts of the individual actions of the people charged, but what actually happened is not particularly a mystery. Um, There's obviously extensive CCTV we've heard in previous court hearings. So there's people reacted to an event, Mm. basically Tristan Jerry's uh, coming in and opening fire. Um, There's a lot of evidence that's going to be, you would imagine, that's going to come up at these um, cases, you know, if they go to trial, if there's no pleas on these that won't be the usual sort of building of the case. It'll be a very factual, almost playing out of what occurred. Yeah. The identity of of individuals on the CCTV, etc. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be in dispute. Mm. Um, It's not going to be in dispute. What what Tristan Sherry did, for example, that's going to be accepted as as pretty factual. He's obviously dead, so there's no no criminal proceedings can be brought against him. Um, But I suppose what it's going to come down to is... People are going to, you would imagine self-defense or yeah. those kind of defenses are going to be an issue. Obviously, this is being heard before the special criminal court. So that means that it's not before a jury. Um, it's before a three judges panel. So that, again, automatically changes the kind of tenor of 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 the evidence. So not the specific evidence. Um, it becomes more of, uh, you know, a, a, the, the there'd be a legal dimension in terms of the the arguments made. But you see, yeah, there's a lot of, there's there's mm. there's eight young men uh, facing charges and... On different sides of this, that we're, different we're in different, because there's charges relating to what happened to Tristan Cherry and charges relating to what happened to Jason Hennessy, obviously. Yeah. The 17-year-old boy involved in this case, obviously, is entitled to anonymity. Yeah. But he is before the special. He's before the special criminal court yeah. as well, yeah. And then there's an, a, another 18 called Jonas Kabangu yeah. and he's been charged with violent disorder at the steakhouse. His address can't be uh, reported for security reasons, which sort of gives you a little bit of insight into the levels of tensions that still exist there in the background after this yeah. absolutely explosion of violence, really, on Christmas Eve. Like, you know, it's last year, but just about. It's yeah. still only seven months ago that this happened. Yeah, and I mean the the tensions remain from the from that are still flowing from that. There have been a number of incidents, none of them uh, leading to fatalities or serious injuries, but there have been, uh, you know, cars burned out and homes attacked, 
And obviously the guards moved very quickly um, and a number of people were brought before the courts. But there certainly is a fear that that the, the, the fallout from this is not at an end. Each of these guys will come forward and be able to make their case. Um, but there's four of them that are charged specifically with murder. Uh, David and Ma, um, Michael Andricott, uh, Noah Museni mm-hmm. and Wayne Deegan as well. Wayne Deegan, who's the only one that's in his mid-twenties, is 25. All the rest are under 21, uh, basically. So very young men. Um, the eighth then being Brandon Hennessy. I'm not sure we... Yeah. Named, named, gave him his first name at the beginning of this podcast, but he's accused of engaging in violent disorder. We've named all all eight bar the 17-year-old yeah. whose yeah. identity is withheld um, that are facing the court in this case. Yeah, so, I mean, all of these cases that, that come before the Special Criminal Court, as I said, there's been this, um, because I suppose of the the investigations into the, into the Kinnan cartel, effectively, uh, the Special Criminal Court was before the the Hutch Kinnan feud broke uh, broke out, I mean the Special Criminal Court was handling handling a relatively small amount of cases as mm. sort of the operations of dissident organisations started to be downplayed. There was a, a sort of I suppose two murders that in the 2010s, uh, the murder of Eamon Kelly and the murder of Peter Butterley, both uh, committed by uh, real IRA members. And there was actually large groups of them brought before the courts as well. But other than that, you know, the the special criminal court had started to wind down would be probably uh, overstating it, but it certainly had been used less and less. But the Kidding Cartel uh, investigations a lot of them came before the courts, a lot of guilty pleas ultimately. Obviously, there was the Regency trial as well, which took up six months. So there has been a backlog. Mm. Obviously, you need three judges to sit for these cases. And these cases are tend to be very long, don't they? I mean, a lot of these cases have been, mm. you know, they, they've had a lot of legal submissions. So there have been this big delay Um but yeah, it's it's the special criminal court, I suppose. Some people were predicting it's there's demise. There's two of them operating now, of course. There's, there's two of them operating mm. now to, to to sort of deal with that that backlog. And people are, of course, entitled to, you know, to have their cases heard within a period of time. I mean, you're seeing it up the north. I think there was a case recently of uh, a dissident figure. I think it had been 14 years from charge to he was actually found not guilty ultimately. That's mad. Yeah. I think the North is particularly backlogged yeah. for whatever reason that yeah. is. I mean, perhaps it's the level of offences. Certainly when we talk to our colleague, Alison Morris, she sort of, you know, talks about it just being a very trudging system up there. Yeah. And there's a lot of um, time used up in bail hearings and all yeah. this, and particularly bail hearings in the North because it takes so long for the cases to get before the courts. You know, you pretty much, I think the average is about four years. Yeah. Now, it's not that long here. No, it's not that long, but... I suspect you'll see these, these cases heard by yeah. early 26, I think. Um, and I think in the North, they can have sort of separate hearings on matters of yeah. legal matters um, that can also stretch it out. And obviously some people like to stretch these things out as well. But certainly... Um, He's been this this young man's been granted bail, and that's you know that's that's going to happen. I think if if mm. people are waiting a long time on remand, well, obviously strict conditions as well. But we shall return, no doubt, to this Hennessy story, and that it is before the special criminal court allows us to talk about it a little bit more than other stories. Obviously, thanks, Nicola. Thanks, Nat. I'm Nicola Talent, and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts.